So with the election coming up in November, just being six weeks and one day away from today, um, <clears throat> this is, of course, all you hear about on cable news, much of what you hear about on non-cable news. So I thought I would give a read to something that might have something informative to say about politics today. Um, and the book I decided to read was uh, George Lakoff's The Political Mind, A Cognitive Scientist's Guide to Your Brain and Its Politics. Uh, George Lakoff is a, is a linguist who I think is at UC Berkeley and has been there for quite a while. Uh, he also happens to be a very um, politically active and vocal liberal. Um, I didn't really know what I would get when I read this book, but from the title, The Political Mind, A, S a Cognitive Scientist's Guide to Your Brain and Its Politics, it sounds like a, a fairly objective uh, approach to uh, how your brain works when it thinks about politics or experiences political issues. That objectivity, that expectation of objectivity was as I'll talk about in a minute, a bit displaced, but um, it had some interesting ideas anyway. So I'd like to talk about those. Um, I was drawn to the book mostly because I knew uh, Vlakov's reputation as a cognitive scientist and as someone who was known for spelling out how cognitive science overlaps with and to some extent explains many of the phenomena that we recognize as falling along the left-right spectrum of political ideologies. And Lakoff, and Lakoff certainly does offer some insights into how that kind of thinking occurs and, in what, and, and what in particular is unique about the way uh, we think about political issues. The, the driving force behind the book and Lakoff's main idea uh, which should be apparent to anyone who watches uh, endless hours of cable news in rapture, as I do every night, is that whoever controls the narrative, the political narrative, frames the debate. So whoever controls the narrative frames of a debate controls the issues itself, and therefore always wins. How is this the case, you might ask? Lakoff says that our view of rationality is largely and erroneously informed by the Enlightenment, which he details in the beginning of his book. Uh, he, he claims that the Enlightenment is, assumes many things about the way rationality functions that are actually just not true uh, in the way that we think about uh, political issues and even other issues. He says that ration, Enlightenment rationality is conscious, universal, disembodied, logical, unemotional, value-neutral, interest-based, and literal. And through several examples of the, at the beginning of the book, he shows why almost none of those are actually true. Uh, for example, we make decisions, uh, for example, maybe to, to help other people that don't actually maximize our own self-interest and that are tied up we make other decisions based on value and emotional content so these sort of enlightenment uh, presuppositions sort of lead us to a model that rationality actually doesn't work on it doesn't work through he claims that Democrats, the American, the contemporary American Democratic Party, uh, often with his, with, with Lakoff's very uh, grating, whiny tone, uh, remain stuck in this Enlightenment view of rationality. And because of this, they're still in the habit of trying to lasso the facts and build charts and models and explain why Republicans are simply wrong on many of the issues. And Lakoff claims that this just isn't enough, that showing people charts and graphs and facts and figures and math just won't do the trick. 
but Republicans have learned how reason really works, he says, that it is in fact couched in tropes, in metaphors, in emotional phrases and associations, and they use them to their advantage in shaping political issues and shaping their talking points. Republicans just couch the issue in terms that will help them. Uh, that is, they use their sort of constructed narrative frames and then repeat that frame over and over until it sticks in the minds of the public. Once stuck, it's difficult but not impossible to dislodge, but doing so uh, would just be a matter of finding the right frame, a, a contradictory frame that speaks to your own political basis or bias, and saying it repeatedly. For example, conservatives have controlled the ideological frame regarding the war on terror for the last decade, and therefore they control many of the issues that we associate with homeland security, which is another phrase uh, used unquestioningly, according to Lakoff, that plays into Republican and neoconservative hands. Instead of accepting the frames of questions like, do you think we should continue to fight the war on terror, or should we pull out like cowards, or should middle class tax cuts be extended, or should we soak the middle class with more taxes? In asking questions like that, what they've done is they've basically asked a question but also given you the answer. Because of course you don't want to say, pull out of the war on terror. Of course you don't want to say, soak the middle class with more taxes. So what they've done is asked a loaded question. They've asked a question that already has its answer in the construction of the question. And what, what Lakoff says liberals and progressives need to do is to refocus these questions onto the issues of fairness, equality, and government accountability. In other words, uh, use those what he claims are liberal progressive values uh, in such a way that benefits your own narrative frame and your own position, and then repeat that framing over and over and over and over again until you're blue in the face because that is the only way you're going to win. That's what he says. Uh, there are a lot of problems with this book though. With, like I said, an objective sounding title like The Political Mind, A Cognitive, a cognitive Scientist's Guide to Your Brain and Its Politics, I didn't really want any of Lakoff's partisan comments. I certainly have my own political predispositions, but I wasn't really looking for his. I just wanted his expertise as a cognitive scientist. And I knew before opening the book that he's a committed liberal. Um, many of my own sympathies, too, are, are very much left of center politically. But he spends too much time demonizing one political perspective and glorifying another and too little time providing details and supporting evidence for the claims that he's making. I feel that this saps the book of almost all of its credibility. And in order to have a book be a powerful explanatory tool, instead of passing as a chunky pamphlet for the Obama campaign, it should stick to the facts of the matter, accompanied maybe with some reasonable inductions, predictions, and details of his methodological practice and how he came to his conclusions. Calling President Bush a traitor, which he actually does in the book, seems to me to accomplish nothing. Furthermore, it made me realize more and more as I read it that this book is simply an example of what Lakoff himself is talking about that is a successful example of framing issues in an advantageous way. Of course, he would be the last person to actually bring that to the reader's attention because once that, become, once that, once that becomes apperceptive in the reader's mind, then you've sort of lost the whole advantage of framing the debate in the first place. I think the book may have suffered from being written for too popular an audience. Uh, he may have thought that he was uh, writing for liberals uh, and perhaps a, a group of liberal liberals who were 
uh, unquestioning and uncritical of what he had to say. It seems like the political pot shots that Lakoff takes were filler for an audience who is more eager to see their opponent trashed than to actually read something about how cognitive science can help us better understand how we think metaphorically about political issues. Uh, and I came really close to, as you can see in the sidebar, uh, giving this two stars instead of three, which is something I almost never do. Uh, but I did end up thinking when I finished the last page of the book that there were a couple of insights that salvaged this book from being a total loss. Uh, so I opted for three instead of two stars. Uh, for someone interested in this topic, I would suggest looking elsewhere, but because I'm not particularly familiar with uh, this genre, as in how how cognitive science overlaps with political thinking. I'm not exactly in a position to do this right now in this video, but as I continue reading and as I learn more, I'll certainly offer up anything that I find in future videos. George Lakoff's The Political Mind, A Cognitive Scientist's Guide to Your Brain and Its Politics.